Parliament's history begins a fresh chapter for the opening of the rebuilt Commons Chamber by His Majesty the King. The original was destroyed by enemy action in 1941, and the new chamber is being opened in Westminster Hall because under the Constitution, the King may not enter the Commons. Following the Speaker's procession are representatives of the Parliaments and legislators of the Commonwealth, an Empire Parliament forming the historic scene of Kings, Lords and Commons meeting together. The air, heavy with traditional pageantry, is lightened by a squad of enthusiastic Mrs. Mops sweeping the carpet before the arrival of the King and Queen. And now, their Majesty's procession, headed by the Minister of Works and the Lord Great Chamberlain, makes its way up the Long Isle. The King and Queen are followed by Queen Mary, with Princess Elizabeth and Princess Margaret at her side. The Duke and Duchess of Gloucester, the Princess Royal, Princess Alice and the Earl of Athlone. After mounting the stairs, their majesties take their places in front of their thrones of state. Then the Lord Chancellor, Lord Jowett, makes his address on behalf of the House of Peers. Most gracious sovereign, we beg leave as an integral part of the Parliament of the United Kingdom to assure your majesty of the undivided loyalty of this house to the persons of your majesties and to the throne, the symbol of the unity of the peoples of the British Commonwealth of Nations. Then followed the speaker who made the address from the commons to the king. Most gracious sovereign, in all humility, we trust that with God's help our deliberations in our new chamber may result in securing the peace, well-being and happiness not only of our own people and the peoples of the Commonwealth but of all the peoples of the world. Mr. Speaker, with measured dignity, presents the address in person to the Sovereign. Such messages are usually sent by a special messenger. And with members of the royal family watching the unforgettable scene, the king rises to make his reply. True to its function of expressing the will and spirit of my people, the House of Commons continued to fulfill its duties despite of the bombing of its home. The new chamber has been built as near as possible in the form of the old. It suggests an almost homely place of discussion and taking counsel, as if it derived some of its virtue from the family circle. But this chamber, in a sense, belongs to our great family, for it is adorned and enriched by generous gifts from all over the Commonwealth. This new chamber will stand as a sign to the world of our faith in freedom, where free men and women can speak in accordance with the dictates of their consciences. Yet with that saving grace of humor and readiness to understand the point of view of others, which has ever been typical of our race. Not for us the silence of suppression. In other places, liberty has perished. But the voice of true democracy is still heard among all our peoples and is a comfort to all those who love and believe in the unfettered expression of honest opinion and noble aspiration and sincere of human feelings.